Have you ever seen a ghost? One in five people say they've been visited by one. In the United States and many other Western cultures mythology, a spirit or ghost is a dead person who interacts with us, the living world. In stories, a ghost may whisper or groan, cause certain things such as furniture to move or fall, mess with electronics or even appear as a shadowy, blurry or see-through figure. Ghost stories can be lots of fun, especially on holidays like Halloween. But some people actually believe that ghosts are real. Chapman University in Orange, California, runs a yearly survey that asks people in the United States about their beliefs in the paranormal. In 2018, 58% of those polled agreed with the statement, places can be haunted by spirits, and almost one in five people from the United States said in another survey that they've seen or been in the presence of a ghost. You have probably seen ghost hunting TV shows, where people use scientific equipment to attempt to record or measure spirit activity. And numerous creepy photos and videos circulating on the internet make it seem like ghosts exist. However, none of these offer good evidence of ghosts. Some are hoaxes, created to fool people, while the rest only prove that equipment sometimes can capture noise, images or other signals that people don't expect. Ghosts are the least likely of many possible explanations. People think ghosts can do things that science says are impossible, like turning invisible or passing through walls. But even with reliable research, scientists haven't found any proof that ghosts are real. What they did find is that many reasons can make people feel like they've had ghostly encounters. Their research shows that you can't always trust what you see, hear, or think. Some people start having unusual experiences that are similar to ghostly encounters when they are quite young. They might wake up and be unable to move. Additionally, they may also see, hear, or feel figures or creatures that aren't really there. This is called a hallucination. And a quick research may reveal what happens to them. Science has a name for it. Sleep paralysis. This condition leaves someone feeling awake but paralyzed or frozen in place. They can't move, speak, or breathe deeply. Sometimes, they hallucinate that creatures are walking or sitting on them. Other times, they can hear screams. Usually, we only start dreaming after we're fully asleep and stop dreaming before we wake. Sleep paralysis happens when the brain messes up this process of falling asleep or waking. Our most vivid, lifelike dreams happen during a certain stage of sleep. It's called rapid eye movement, or REM sleep. In this stage, our eyes dart around under closed lids. Though our eyes move, the rest of our body can't. It's paralyzed. Most likely, that's to prevent people from acting out their dreams, which could get dangerous. Then our brain usually turns this paralysis off before we wake up. But in sleep paralysis, we wake up while it's still happening. But we don't have to experience sleep paralysis to sense things that aren't there. Have you ever felt your phone buzz? then check to find there was no message. Have you heard someone calling your name when no one was there? Have you ever seen a face or figure in a dark shadow? These misperceptions also count as hallucinations, say scientists. They think that just about everyone has such experiences. Most of us just ignore them. But some may turn to ghosts as the explanation. Because we're used to our senses giving us accurate information about the world, when experiencing a hallucination, our first instinct is usually to believe it. If you see or feel the presence of a loved one who died, and trust your perceptions, then it has to be a ghost, which is easier to believe than the idea that your brain is lying to you. The brain has a tough job. Information from the world bombards you as a mixed up jumble of signals. The eyes take in color. The ears take in sounds. The skin senses pressure. The brain works to make sense of this mess. This is called bottom-up processing. And the brain is very good at it. It's so good that it sometimes finds meaning in meaningless things. This is known as pareidolia. You experience it whenever you stare at clouds and see rabbits, ships, or faces. Or gaze at the moon and see a face. But the brain also does top-down processing. It adds information to your perception of the world. Most of the time, there's way too much stuff coming in through the senses. Paying attention to all of it would overwhelm you. So your brain picks out the most important parts, and then it fills in the rest. Your current perception is a brain-created image from signals received by your senses. While usually accurate, sometimes the brain includes things that aren't really there. 
This is what happens when so-called ghost hunters capture sounds that they say are ghosts speaking. They call this electronic voice phenomenon, or EVP. The recording is probably just random noise. If you listen to it without knowing what was supposedly said, you probably won't hear words. But when you know what the words are supposed to be, you might now find that you can discern them easily. Research has shown that patients who experience visual hallucinations are more likely than normal to experience periidolia, see faces in random shapes, for instance. In one study, a team tested whether this might also be true for healthy people. They recruited 82 volunteers and asked a series of questions about how often these volunteers had hallucination-like experiences. For example, do you ever see things other people cannot? And do you ever think that everyday things look abnormal to you? Next, the participants looked at 60 images of black and white noise. For a very brief moment, another image would flash in the center of the noise. 12 of these images were faces that were easy to see. Another 24 were hard to see faces. And 24 more images showed no faces at all, just more noise. The volunteers had to report whether a face was present or absent in each flash. Participants who had initially reported more hallucination-like experiences were more likely to report faces in the flashes of random noise. They were also better at identifying those images that contained face periidolia. Researchers concluded that when people sense ghosts, they're often alone, in the dark, and scared. If it's dark, your brain can't get much visual information from the world. It has to create more of your reality for you. In a different study, the researchers suspected that critical thinking might be an important factor in determining who gets to see ghosts or not. They did some tests on students which showed that students with higher grades tended to have lower levels of paranormal beliefs and students in the physical sciences, engineering or math tended not to believe as strongly as those studying the arts. While this study did not actually assess the student's ability to think critically, previous research has shown that science students tend to have stronger critical thinking skills than art students. That's probably because you need to think critically in order to conduct scientific experiments. And thinking critically can help you scout out likely causes for an unusual experience without involving ghosts. But even among science students and working scientists, though, paranormal beliefs persist. So if someone tells you a ghost story on Halloween, enjoy it, but remain skeptical. Think about other possible explanations for what was described. Remember that your mind may fool you into experiencing spooky things. Thank you for staying engaged until the very end. Make sure you stay updated by subscribing and feel free to share your thoughts on the topics you'd like us to delve into next.